Okay, so I'm gonna make this quick. In this video, you're going to learn about framework features you did not know about. We're talking things like how the hell can we unlock a secret place for designing in Framer, or how can we replace Photoshop and edit our images in Framer, among many other things. So without any further ado, let me introduce myself. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. Okay, so the first hidden feature is the canvas pages. So you might think that the only way to design in Framer is here. Desktop, tablet, and phone break when you feel really restricted. You're like, uh, how do I explore ideas? I really need Figma. Like I just cannot, I cannot explore here. Wait until you see this. If you go to this top left menu and then preferences, you can enable canvas pages. Now I just disabled it because probably this is what you're seeing by default. If you go to pages, that's that's all you see, your pages. But if you go here again, preferences and you enable canvas pages, oopsie daisy, there is a new section here. So we can click here to add the new canvas page and we can name it inspo or whatever, or exploration. And here we get a truly infinite canvas. As you can see, I can start drawing frames I can add text layers, I can draw, I don't know, pets here and different like SVGs. And none of this here is on the website. So this is just a, I don't know, a place in our project to explore different ideas, maybe put together a mood board. Again, just try out different versions for your hero section or whatever. And the great thing is that since this is not in Figma, you can super easily bring it over to your pages. You just Press Command C, go here to the home, paste it in, and there you go. You have it there, fully editable. I think it's pretty cool, isn't it? Did you know about this? So the next step is this. You just placed your image here on your website and you're like, mm, you're not really feeling it, right? You think that it should have been black and white. And now you go back to your Photoshop or whatever image editor and you're like tweaking the colors come back to Framer, export it, whatever, upload it. It's just, you know, a ton of time. When in reality, you can do the whole process in Framer. Let me show you how. You select your image and on the right panel, there is a secret property. You, can, you just have to click here, styles. And under filters, you have a bunch of properties that you can use for modifying your image. For example, grayscale. So if I set this to 100, look at that. That is a black and white image. And that's not the only thing. I can also add other filters like brightness. So I can change the brightness of the image. I can also change the contrast. As you can see, really, really nice. Let's see what else. I can also change the hue. So if it's not grayscale, I can change the hue here. So if I want to have pink mountain, it will be pink. We can also invert it. Really nice. And we can also saturate and we have a bunch of other things. So you can just explore these uh, yourself. But isn't it cool? Like we don't have to go back to Figma or not Figma. That that was that was the other tip. Uh, this is Photoshop. So we don't have to go back to Photoshop. So, so yeah, I think it's pretty nice. And by the way, what I also like, this is just an extra tip here. If you have like another image. So let's just actually duplicate this and grab another image. And if we put this other image on top of this one, we can use blending modes, which is right here, blending. And we can, you know, do even crazier effects. So you can just, you know, go through all of these different blending modes and you can see the, you know, creative effects you can achieve with this, which is again, just, just really cool. If you play around with this, uh, just a little bit, you're gonna see that the uh, possibilities are endless because still the end result is a real website and we have these cool effects on the website. So yeah, it's it's just pretty nice. You might have already known this, that you can use open type, but maybe you don't know this. So if you have, for example, this two here and you go to open type, and by the way, not all fonts support this. You can just see if this open type is available. You can click here and now it's enabled. I can go down here and search for subscript or superscript. And there you go. I can place this little number up there. I get so many questions like, Nandi, how can I do something like this? Well, you can use open type and there you go. Your number is up there. 
The next hidden feature is actually not inside the framer. So we have to jump into our browser in order to see that. So let's open Arc. So here we are in our browser and I'm going to press Command and T to search for a website. It's going to be framer.new. So have you ever visited framer.new? Well, let's see what happens if we press enter. As you can see, this website actually starts a new project for you. So yeah, it seems like that you can just browse the internet and then whenever you want to create a new project, you just type in framer.new, click enter or press enter and there you go. You have a brand new project. Okay, so the next one is going to be pretty useful. So let's say you drew a frame here and then you drew another frame within, which is going to be white. And then you duplicate this a few times and then you realize that, oops, I wanted to center this little object within this little white one. So how do you do that? You want to quickly select all of those white frames, but you cannot really do that because you cannot like drag because it's like you're dragging things. You would need to like click into each of these, but you know, we have now only three, but if you have 10 or a hundred of these, then it would be much harder. So let me show you a quick way of selecting all of these elements. We have to select all these three frames. And then you can see that we're still like not selecting those white frames. We're selecting everything. So we're going to have to right click here and select children. And now you can see we are only selecting the children within these frames. So now I can nicely center these little frames and we're good to go. So it is really helpful, especially when it comes to, for example, vector sets. Because inside of vector sets, we have all of these icons, but the icons are wrapped in an additional frame, which makes it really hard to select just them or just the icons within because we are selecting all the frames. So we just select everything like this and then right click again and select children. And now we're only selecting the icon within those frames. So again, this is really helpful. I didn't, I am, I'm actually talking about this because I didn't really know about this uh, for a long time. So I guess it might be helpful for you as well. Another last thing we, you know, know that in Framer, uh, the easiest way to up your designs or make them better is by adding noise over everything. It just instantly makes everything look better. Let's just imagine you have an animated gradient background, you put noise in it, it just looks better. So let's say we have this animated gradient background and I'm going to put noise over it. Uh, how do we actually do that, right? That's the, that's the question here. So let me show you. There is a secret way in Framer to add noise really easily. I'm going to show it to you right now. You just draw a frame, you place it over the element. So in this case, the animated gradient background with absolute positioning. I'm going to pin it to all sides so it's filling up the available space. And we're, of course, not going to use white fill color. We're going to switch this to image fill. And then here's the trick. We have to switch the type from fill to tile. And then we get these presets here. And we can select the first one, which is noise. As you can see, now we have noise over the animated green background. It looks amazing. Well, not really. Uh, we have to tweak it a little bit. For example, we can change the size. So how large these noise is maybe 150%. And then what we can also do is we can, you know, drop the opacity and then it will look a little bit better. What we can also do, I usually set a blending mode on this. Uh, I don't really remember which one, maybe screen. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I just usually experiment and, and, uh, and wait until I get something that looks cool. So you can see that immediately this thing just looks better. Maybe we can Add it a little bit more strength like this. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And in some cases, you might need this noise to look a little bit differently. Maybe you want to invert it, invert the colors. We can do that really easily. We already learned that we have filters here. We can click invert and now the colors have inverted. Pretty cool. So yeah, I think that's it for today. There are many more secret features uh, that we don't know about in Famer but we're gonna leave those for another video. So for now, that's all. Let me know in the comments if you wanna learn more, if you wanna know more, if you know any other you know, hidden features, or if you have any other questions. Check out Framer University because I have a bunch of free tutorials, remixes, for example, this thing that we are seeing on the screen right here.
This animated random background is from the Frame University website. You can get it for completely free. So that's it. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.